Hello fellow Flosstubers. It's been almost a month since I've recorded anything and part of that is life gets busy. <laughs> so I do apologize. Welcome back. Thank you for showing up. Um, I appreciate the followers I have. I appreciate all of you for uh, checking out my uh, my whips and the different things I have. Um, I'm not as busy as a lot of you are and I probably could be if I didn't play as many games uh, but I am I do keep busy with my cross stitch and all the other crafts that I do too so that being said since I had Brazilian embroidery yesterday and some of you have been watching my um, birds grow I wanted to show you how much farther I've gotten in the last month on the birds so this is my Brazilian embroidery there you go and there's the bird and as you can tell let's see if I get my right here it's a flap the bottom doesn't look good I gotta underneath the wing I gotta fix it but um, anyway the wing flaps and so I'm, I'm thinking about keeping it like that and right now I'm attaching the um, the wing so it's slowly getting done um i was even working on it a few minutes before before i showed you because i have a real dark spot let's see if i can get my hands in there right there because i did black and it didn't need to be black it needed to be more white so i'm going over the black to make it more white um and i really do like the way it's coming out so then when that one's done i have one more bird to do then I'll do the bird feed on the the bird feeder and then I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do the trees in the background because the pattern doesn't have it so I'll have to design my own tree um, in case you didn't notice I just right into that one um, <laughs> life has just been whew, and I figure that if I get this in in a good amount of time then that gives my mother time to not get to get home because I know when she gets home around 12 31 o'clock she's gonna call and ask what I'm up to so uh, partly because I've been over there two and three times a week with dad and his physical therapy because he had a knee replacement and then mom was taking advantage of that and playing needy so <laughs> I'm having to deal with that part and it's not a big deal um, Kind of makes you feel needed, I guess. All right, so in between life and the complicated things, um, I was working on my ambrosia from Marabilia, and um, when it got into so much of the rocks, I decided, okay, I was taking a break. So last week, I actually worked on my um, heaven and earth designs. So I got not much done, not a lot. And when you consider how much confetti there is on that thing, I'm like, you know, I'm, I was, I was almost debating whether I wanted to continue doing this, and I think I will. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of that frame because I want that frame, uh, and I'll swap it out with the uh, ambrosia because the ambrosia, to show you, excuse me for my reach. The ambrosia is this far and I just got back into it uh, last night so this is the direction that I was working in last night so I'm working my way up and so um, it's looking pretty good I mean I'm really pleased with the results so I have um, I decided to do the one over one on the uh, face the skin the face the hands the legs so that part's going to take a little bit longer but i think it will be worth it because i was i was doing the youtube and comparing the two you know two over two versus one over one on facial skin and how to deal with that when you have multiple colors type thing and i really did like the way it looked a lot better so i decided i'm going to try that and I noticed that um, it was kind of funny because I was watching 
Robert, and I can't remember uh, how to pronounce his last name. But anyway, I was watching Robert, and he said squirrel. And I just got cracked up because that's kind of the way I feel sometimes. You know, there goes the squirrel, and ooh, I'll go that way. Oh, there goes another squirrel. I'll go that way, just like a dog. So um, anyway, those are the projects I've been working on this last month. I really haven't worked on anything else other than the um, needle holders, the needle cases, and I had two of those done, and I think I showed those in the last video. So that's done. The W on that was completely done. I put all my um, quilting needles in that one. It's all set. It goes with my quilting, excuse me, my quilting box when I go quilting. Um, I have been working on Forest Glorist quilt with my mother, and I did a rabbit uh, the other day, but that's only a photo, and so until, until more of that is completed and I can show you the whole quilt, I don't really think that um, just showing you pieces would be all that thrilling. Plus, I don't know if half of you are quilters or not, so it... I kind of hate to show quilt stuff when I'm doing cross stitch stuff and plus floss too is more for floss than it is for quilting so I have been getting some new stuff in um, I had an awesome uh, happy mail what I call happy mail on Instagram one of my Instagram gals um, Angie oh crap hold on let me grab it Angie what's your last name Angie Meyer. She is so cool. I w I've been admiring her um, Henry VIII and the, and the Seven Wives pattern. And so she was a sweetheart and said I could have it. So um, yesterday in the mail, which is kind of funny because she lives in Illinois. I live in Washington State. She mailed it from Illinois on Saturday. I got it yesterday, which was Monday. And that was a kicker because the beads that I ordered from Illinois last month took 11 days to get here. 11 days! But yet this thing took like one day, maybe two. So let me reach over. Excuse my reach. Okay. Got it. Alright, so um, these are my... So a random act of kindness. She, yep, yeah, it's six. King Henry the Eighth and his six wives. So see this pattern. Isn't that awesome? Not sure what I do with it when I did it, but I'm planning on doing this. Um, I think it'll be cool. And um, who knows? Maybe I'll give it to my son. <laughs> So anyway, she gave me that pattern, and then she also sent me this. Isn't that cool? Friendship. It says, friendship like a flower blooms. Isn't that cool? So, I may do this up and then um, give this to a friend somewhere, or I may just uh, give it to one of you guys. I don't know. We'll see. I like to make things and then give them away. So, that's my random act of kindness. Oh, she did give me, um, amazingly, she gave me a ring that had the, the flosses that she was using. Isn't that cool? So, I got all that to go with this pattern. So, I'm going to keep it all together. And actually, that's going to go in my zipper bag, and I will show you because I was buying zipper bags to uh, try to organize myself more. So, I bought these zipper bags on... Plastic, good zipper bags. I got these on um, Amazon. So what I started doing was I started putting in the, can you see that? I put the pattern in. This one has pattern, floss, and fabric. So it's all ready to go. So if and when I decide to work on it, it's done. So I can grab a box, a uh, bag, excuse me, I'm itching again. And it's like this one. Oh, you didn't see this one. I don't think. I don't think I had it. Anyway, I had ordered this way back in May. And I finally got it 
I think the first of the month. So there's that. See? And I don't know if I showed that last time or not. And so this is the fabric for that. It's gray tones. I kind of wanted it gray tones because of um, Halloween. So anyway, I've got all of that put in here together. And then I even have a um, smaller bag because I accidentally ordered these small ones. I accidentally ordered 10 of those, so I got 10 of both sizes. Um, so then I had to order my bigger sizes. And Lynn doesn't pay attention to sizes until it gets in the mail and then goes, oh crap, I ordered the wrong size. But So I thought, well, I'd use those for my um, flosses and beads or whatever that go with them, and they can go inside here with this one. So, I I got that's two. I must have yeah. Then another one. This is the um, Hope one. And what I like about it is you can see through it. And then this is the Marabilia. See that? I got the beads with that. I don't. Well, it does look like I have the fabric for that one. And then let's see this one. Oh. This one I think I'm going to do next. Be quick and easy. I want to do a couple of things for my kids. So I have, and I don't know if you can see it, um, Philip. Philip's my son. So this is what his name, his crest for his name. I bought this when the kids were in high school. And so I decided, okay. So I went through and I picked out, and I think... Even cats is in here, but it's under Kathleen, not cat. And so um, I'll do up hers. And then here's the, the Let Freedom Ring. And I've actually got some fabric that I got at um, Hobby Lobby up in Olympia. And I think that's a perfect size for it. So I'm doing that. I just dropped everything. And so then, what else have I got? Oh, another Marabilia, excuse me. Um, the beads are with this one, but it doesn't have the threads or the fabrics. And then I put um, my little house, the Salem one in here. And you know what's funny? You can actually see it through here, which is kind of cool. And that was part of the reason why I got uh, these bags was they're kind of see-through, but they're not plastic enough to, um, you know, it's more netting plastic hooked together. So it's kind of cool. So anywho, I got all of that. And then I won on Instagram uh, some fabric from Jude Designs. Jude Designs. And I love her fabrics. She hand dyes stuff. And I just love them. So when I won, and I think, I think this is the one I won, the green, because I asked her for the green. Isn't that gorgeous? And I know with green, we can always use green, but it's not showing up in the pretty green that it is. It's showing more muddy. And those of you that know me, I don't do muddy. So then I got this with it, and I figured while I was at it, let's see if you can see that. Isn't that cool? Love those colors. So I figured while I was at it, if I was get, if she was going to go through the trouble of sending that to me, I was going to go ahead and order. So I ordered another one. Um, let's see if I can take these off real quick out of the tags real quick, and I'll show you. So I kind of like this one. I thought this would be kind of cool for a mar marabilia. So look, it's got, um, I need something to I'll use this. Sorry. All right, so see the colors? They're kind of multicolor. It's almost like a rainbowy kind of color. I like that. And I thought with Marab Marabilia stuff, um, that would be cool. It's soft enough, but it's not in your face. So um, I think that would be a cool piece. And I haven't decided which one. I want to do for that. And I like to keep the tags with them, but 
I'll just throw them over there right now. And then, you know, I gotta have my purple. Gotta have my purple. No clue well do with this purple. But I do like it. See that? I don't know. Hmm. It's a lot more purple than it shows. So. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to get a green, I might as well get a big green. So I got a bigger piece of green, which is more like this. And doggone it, if it's not showing the proper color. Okay. You know, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. That's more blue, but it has blue tones in it. So it's a real pretty green, and I'm really surprised that it's not. That looks like crap. Okay. Well, anyway, um, it's not crap. It's a pretty color. So now I have a big enough piece. Oh, and then I have to tell you, it, it's kind of funny. I was going through my stuff. No, I wasn't going through my stuff. I was looking for my cross stitch because I thought um, when I got tired of the rocks on Ambrosia, I wanted to work on something else. So I knew I had the heaven and earth designs and I knew I was kind of frustrated because some of the, I found out later that some of the threads that I was using, uh, the colors that I was using was the wrong color because the numbers came so close to each other like 3371 and then 3771 so and there didn't happen to be another color or two in between my box that I could distinguish oh this is 33 three, not 38 or this was 33 three, not 37 and so um, I was always taking the last two numbers when I was looking sometimes and not paying attention to whether it was 3337 or 38 in front of it. And that caused a little bit of trouble. So I have to go back and fix it. And about the only way I can fix it is just going right over it because there's no way I'm going to be able to take that out. And actually I'll show you why and it's a pain in the butt. My back is awful. See that back? Now you try to get something out of that. Uh, my backs are usually really good, but when you have that much confetti, it's really hard to keep it nice. And when you're doing one over one on 28 count, you're, you're so tiny that it's just buckling up on everything. So, um, and confetti is awful. Uh, it's not one of my favorite things, and I didn't realize this piece had so much confetti. I think probably about 75% of that design is going to be confetti. But normally my backs look like this. So, see the difference? Anyway. Okay, so back to my story. So I was trying to figure out and I thought, oh cool, I will go get my Precious Moments piece that is so big and that it's the family history excuse me again it's the family history one where you can put names in it well I found I found the piece all ready to go for me to stitch on it and for some unknown reason I cannot find the floss that I was using and I can't find the pattern that I was using if you remember a couple months ago, about a month ago, when I found it, I went and enlarged the pattern pieces because I enlarge all my pattern pieces. And since it's not here, I can't show you. But anyway, I enlarged my pattern pieces. I took it to the store, I enlarged it, I marked, and I remember specifically, I marked all the work that I had done with the marker saying that, okay, this part's done, this part's done, and where to start again. And then I rolled it up, I think, or I folded it. Chances are I rolled it. Okay, so if I rolled it. So then I was asking myself, well, what did I do? Why isn't the pattern with my piece? 
Why isn't the p the threads with my piece? Still haven't figured that question out either. I, I'm still, duh, what did I do with it kind of thing. So, I'm still looking. And trust me, I did that um, when I first thought about it. It was last week. And we're working on a week now. And you can pretty much count that every time I go downstairs, I'm looking in a drawer. I'm looking in a closet. I'm trying to figure out what the heck I did with the pattern and the floss. Now, the floss is not a big deal because I have tons and tons of floss. So I can always go get more t floss. But I can't do anything without the pattern, and I'm pretty sure the book and the pattern are together. So whatever harebrained idea I had, and thinking, oh, I'll put it in the same place, guess what? Can't find it. Can't find the pattern. So, anywho, that is pretty much where my life has been for the last month, and um, I'm into 21 minutes. So... It's probably a good thing. Um, I really can't think of too much more going on. I We had our fair. I did not enter anything in the fair because I don't like the way the fair is. Um, around here, and it was kind of interesting because we entered, I entered um, one of the teachers two of her pieces, and then I entered a piece that was um, Felicia's. Felicia Conrad, who passed away last year. So I entered her piece, and two of the three pieces got a blue ribbon and one got a red. Well, they're Brazilian embroidery. They're not embroidery. So there's a difference. There's a difference in twist. There's a difference in the floss that you use, and that's why it's called Brazilian embroidery, because you use a different, you use rayon floss instead of cotton and all the other stuff, and it twists differently. So, I read the comments from the judges. And the comments, both comments on the two blue had something to do with the way that it was framed. And my brain is going, why are you nitpicking over a, a tiny little fold in one of them because of the way that it was framed? So, yeah, I don't know. And, you know, I would have um, I would have called the gal, but she didn't leave her name and phone number on the on her uh, ticket, you know, her judging thing, and, which is one thing I do love about my mother when she judges quilts. And my mother can tell you every quilt she ever judged, if she can pretty much tell you the reason why she gave a blue or that she gave a red or that she gave a white one and she was real impressed this year because she only gave one white and two red and my mother is a stickler when it comes to quilting she's judged for over 30 years yeah 30 years my mother has judged for 30 years here in um, Washington State so and she has taught most of the quilters that judge now she taught them how to judge and there are some other judges around here that are not worth a piece of paper they fly on but anyway so anyhow my mother tells them exactly what's wrong you know she's she's very positive when she does her judging so she gives them a positive attitude of um, you did a beautiful job um, you need to work a little bit on and then she tell them what they worked on and how she how they can improve that and then she signs her name and her phone number and tells them if they have any questions to contact her and my mother when she's contacted and it's I think she's only been contacted maybe a dozen times in the 30 years that she's been doing it she will explain to you exactly you know she'll ask what quilt it is and once she's got that mentally in her mind then she will tell you exactly what she why she did the judging the way that she did and her explanations are honest um, she was really shocked this year because there was only she said there was only a handful of quilts that the bindings didn't um, didn't do the way they're supposed to you're supposed to have a flat binding and stuff so 
Oops, I'm off subject. That's quilting. That is not embroidery. So anyway, back to the embroidery. So I'm kind of glad I didn't put my embroidery in. I didn't have anything to put in anyway because I'm not done. As you can tell, I'm. how long have I been working on I think I've started talking to you guys on the, the birds. And I've only been doing this for six months. So um, <laughs> the birds are still not done. I started it a year ago at seminar. Seminar was a month ago. So a year and a month is how long I've been working on the birds. But then I only do that on the Mondays that we have the meetings. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen and friends, thank you for um, checking in on me. Uh, life gets in the way sometimes. Um, I've been saying how life great, uh, how life is great because I want a positive attitude through life and the older we get the more positive I want to be I don't want to be kinda of like my mother and be grouch <laughs> so anyway um, even on my blogs I'm saying that we're good you know stuff happens it's not the nicest thing the friendliest thing or anything but we gotta stay positive and it's like with my cat missing um, I'm staying positive I'm still reeling the effects of missing my cat but um, I know life goes on and I need to move on so it's time to move on and get some cross stitch done so um, we're into 26 minutes boy I chatted for five minutes already so if you can think of anything that you want me to say or do I normally I normally try to throw in a tip and my brain has just died but a tip what kind of tip can I give you um, now when it comes to hoops I will give you this to, and and I'm bad about this I'm really bad about this but when you have a hoop like this when you're not working on it always always take it off the hoop take it off the hoop because if you don't, and I haven't done this in a couple months on this poor thing, this little ring right here does not go away very easily. And I think I need to give it a rest. You need to give your fabric uh, a rest so that it calms itself, you know, and it's, it gets back to its normal. Because when you're in a hoop, you're pulling on these, and so you have it all real tight in the hoop, and you leave it there for a month or two then you're not only are you going to get the ring here but believe it or not they get dirty they get really dirty and you'll have a dirt ring around it so take them off the hoop and that was a good reminder for me to do that um, and what I do with my hoops um, my brain just died I like to keep my hoops in a, in a box, keep them all together. Um, I have some old hoops that have the that my grandmother had the wire ones. I do not recommend the wire ones anymore. Um, I used to use them as a kid. The wire ones are worse. Trust me, they're worse. Even though they don't hold it as tight because they got that spring, they're still worse because over time they get that rusty stuff and that is really hard to get out so um, and there is a way to do that and I forgot what it was but when I remember I will tell you next time and another hit tip while I'm at it is um, hairspray works great on pencil marks um, excuse me not pencil marks pin marks if you have a marker or a pen spray it with um, hairspray and wash it and nine times out of ten it will come out and if it doesn't come out the first time I do it again the second time and it does come out so I don't know what it does it breaks up stuff so alright there's my two to it that's two tips and I probably didn't give you one last time so that makes up for that so I hope to see you sooner <laughs> who knows how life will be but we have a great life so enjoy it and have fun cross-stitching because I'm going to be. Take care.